to build up a little tank, first of all I need some geometric items. So I can press this button here, which adds a cylinder to the preview window and also a cylinder one node over here. Again, the workflow is very similar for all items. So we have a geometry node. In this case, it contains the diameter and the length of the cylinder. And we have two nodes to rotate and translate this object. Again, same workflow for all the objects. So I added one cylinder. And let me just switch to the wireframe view so we can see what's happening there. I add now two spherical segments for the tank ends. So I press this button twice. And I got two new nodes over here in the tree view. And of course, I need some input parameters for the symbol. So I select the parameters node. And I press this button twice, which adds two columns to the list and to parameters to the tree view over here. I can now rename these parameters. So this one could be power vessel length. And the other one could be power vessel diameter. As you can see, also the columns down here got renamed. And I can create several variants of the tank symbol. So perhaps tank A. And then I just insert two additional variants, tank B and tank C. And I modify the values over here. So you can mix unit systems. So whatever is on the data sheet, just enter it here. So we might have a length of uh, 2 meters and a diameter of 1 meter. And perhaps we have um, second variant where we have a length of uh, 12 feet and the diameter of 6 feet. And perhaps it's mixed, so we might have um, 3,000 millimeters and a diameter of 42 inches. So whatever's on the data sheet, you can use it in here. When I select one of these variants, the values get copied to the tree view over here. And these nodes can be used to make our items up here parametric. So I can just drag and drop the vessel diameter to the D1 node and the vessel length to the L1 node. And the cylinder resizes immediately. And then I can open up the spherical segment 1, where I just drag and drop the diameter of the cylinder to the diameter of this one. And I drag and drop the diameter to the radius. I open up the formula. And when I do the drag and drop, it just copies the name of the source node into the formula of the target node. That's all. So I could also enter this manually. Or in this case, I just modify the formula. So I divide the diameter by 4. So I get a nice tank end at this position which I rotate about the set axis by 180 degrees. So I have a degree sign on the German keyboard. If you are using, for example, a US keyboard, just use DEG instead of the degree sign. That's also fine. So now we have a left tank end. And now I just need to copy the formulas or link the formulas of the first spherical segment to the second one. So I drag and drop the diameter and also the radius. And then I translate this to the right by power vessel length. Basically, that's it. That's the workflow how we build up symbols in here. So we have now three variants, tank A, B, and C. And as soon as I select a variant here, the values get copied um, to the formulas over here. So everything you have seen so far could be done by junior engineers. You just need to uh, know about engineering, math a little bit. But basically, you look at um, the drawing. You decide what parameters to use and what um, bodies you want to place in here. So the final steps to get this into Smart 3D should be done by senior engineers who know about um, the Smart 3D catalog. It's the parameter mapping and um, selection of the target nodes in the catalog. 
and of course at the end modification of the bulk load files. I do the mapping down here so as you can see I get a red highlight so I have no correct mapping at the moment. So I know we have uh, attribute name called West length. So I can enter this manually but I still get the red highlight. So I can use the context menu to get the interface name for this one. So there's just one interface available and so I can press apply and I want to have this as an occurrence attribute. As you can see I get the green highlight that means we have a correct mapping down here. I can also enter mappings manually. So I know that we have a vessel diameter attribute and it's located on uh, the user interface vessel diameter. So that's the way to do this manually if you know um, what interface and parameter name to map to, you can just enter this manually. So that's the workflow in here to build up symbols. We have a lot of additional objects. So for example, it's possible to place um, nozzles and other connectors. So let's just place one piping port on top. So what I do is I place a piping connector, which is asking for a piping port. A port is always a collection of parameters. So we get the real values from uh, Smart3D when we try to place the object at the end. So we can go to this button and add a piping port with a bolted preset. But the real values come from Smart3D when we place it. So as you can see it placed um, this nozzle shape and I can now modify the piping connector so perhaps we have a length of 100 millimeters in here. And I rotate this so it's looking upwards. So I would just enter minus 90 degrees in this formula. And then I translate this upwards by power vessel diameter divided by 2, which is the radius, plus 90 millimeters. Sorry. And I move it to the right by power vessel length divided by 4, which places this at a quarter of the length of the tank. So that, that's all. It's now placed on top of the tank at a quarter of the tank length. 